Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends and welcome to the first week of February. How many people are happy to see January gone? Depends on what February is going to look like. <laughs> yes, Will snow is still here. <laughs> Will kids go to school this month? Eventually, uh, I, I would assume. <laughs> Will kids go to school in June? In this rate, they might be going to school in July. There's blizzard bags, you know, you can take home your schoolwork and get it done, and that counts as a day of school. I have to wish say, we had those in back my in the day. household, there have been no snow days. My poor children went to school every day in January. I was talking to Hannah yesterday, and she said all that homeschooling, she didn't have her first snow day until we had the sports report canceled one day because of snow. <laughs> that was the first time she's <laughs> well, a teenager. We have, we have this philosophy at our home, because we do homeschool our kids, that we don't take snow days, we take sun days, meaning S U N. And if it's really nice out and the weather's great, who wants to be in school on those days? Well, we should also take S-O-N days, Sundays, and remember the Son of Lord Jesus Christ and focus on our education of Christ. That's right. Well, this month is February. It's Black History Month. Each week in February, we'll be spotlighting an African-American who lived by faith and still that what they did is making a difference in lives today. February also marks a month that two well-known science experts are scheduled to debate. Bill Nye, the science guy, and Ken Ham, founder of Answers in Genesis. Now stay tuned to TV44 programming information as we hope to be able to rebroadcast this debate for you in the coming weeks. That's right, the debate actually is taking place this week and so hopefully by next month we'll be able to rebroadcast that. Looking forward to that, pretty cool. But first our scripture verse of the day and it goes right along with our hope focus theme for the week, courage. Genesis 12, one through five, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse and all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran and they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. And it was in that land of Canaan where Abram did fulfill God's prophecy and started a mighty nation. Even though it didn't seem like it would be possible, Abram was an old man. His wife was old as well. They didn't think they'd be able to have children, yet God told them they would, and they did. And they had courage to follow the Lord's following. Courage, that's our hope focus segment for this week. Take a moment and think about your life. Think about maybe what you're doing right now today. Are, are there things in your life that you think you should be doing, but you're not sure you're ready to go there? Well, Jennifer is here with more. Well, we're going to talk for a few minutes about courage and when God wants you to do something that you just might not be sure about, the steps you need to take to get you where God can use you in incredible and wonderful ways. I am blessed to have Tara Browder here with us. She travels the country, speaks at lots of places, but I tell you what, four years ago that wasn't the case and we're going to hear her story a little bit and hopefully it will be inspiring to you. Tara, thank you so much for being with us here on Faith and Friends. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about your your transition in life over the past four years, where you were four years ago and where you are today. Well, I was a high school teacher four years ago in Virginia, uh, right outside of Washington, D.C. And um, at that time, four years ago, I really felt that God was drawing me uh, to do some more things in the ministry field. And so I began to pray about that and decided to make that transition. So four years ago, you left the you you left the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, did you have a locked job? I mean, you could just step right into the next thing. You knew that it was going to work. How did that go? <laughs> Wasn't that simple? Uh, wish I could say it was, but uh, I, I I think I always anticipated that if I ever left something, I had to hate what I was doing to go to the new thing. But I actually loved teaching. So it wasn't, I wasn't leaving something that I hated or was disgruntled about. Um, and when I did transition into ministry so that I could do that, I actually started being a uh, administrative assistant at a dental office part time so that I could do uh, I, the ministry stuff so on the side. So you could fund it somewhat. Yeah. 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 So what, what are, tell me just briefly what you, what you've moved into. So you left teaching and then what, what became your next career in a sense? Uh, my next career, I was working part-time as the dental, uh, dental administrative assistant at the dental office, and, I, and then I was traveling and ministering in 
churches and, and any, any invitations that I received, I felt like God said, even if it was a, a little Bible study or Sunday school class or a church, that I was supposed to take those invitations. And I had had some during the summers and such when I was teaching, but um, as I took that leap of faith, the Lord began to continue to open doors for me. And so four years later, um, you know, I have an itinerary that's scheduled out till almost August at this point and six months out and I'm having to turn people down. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You mentioned the word leap, the phrase leap of faith, and that came to my mind just seconds before yeah. you said it. Um, as I think about your story and you think about you at home who are maybe thinking about things that God has asked you to do. Now, you left a, a job to travel the country, but some yeah. of us, God may be asking us to make some changes. It doesn't say we have to leave, go across the country, but at the same time, it can be very stressful. Yeah. It can be very difficult to do yeah. that kind of thing. What could you say to encourage people mm -hmm. to uh, say, you know, it, when God is speaking, it's important to listen and trust Him? Yeah. Well, I think that for me, um, when God began to stir things in my heart for ministry, that started way back when I was a child. And as those things were stirred in me, I would just take little steps towards that. If that meant um, starting a Bible study in my home or a small group in my home, I would do that. Or I really had a heart for missions, so I didn't necessarily know exactly where God had called me or what to do, but I got a passport. So I started with little steps towards those things just to show God and demonstrate to him that I, I, I wanted what he wanted for me. And so I found the little steps that I could take, and I found as I took those little steps, God made huge steps um, towards me and with me into the things that he had for me. So it may not be to, if you feel called to missionary work, that you immediately jump on a plane and go to Africa, but it may mean get a passport or learn a new language. Yeah, and so I just took those little steps towards what he was saying. And I believe God opens doors that no man can open. He closes doors that no man can shut. And so as we step towards things, if they're not him, we'll probably see some closed doors. But if they are him, we'll see his favor. And we just go where the favor is. That's what I say. Well, before we go, Tara, could I ask you to just briefly pray for those at home who might feel that stirring inside of them, Absolutely. don't know what to do about it, but they really, really yeah. want to follow God's leading. Absolutely. Well, Jesus, I just thank you so much that, Lord, you are the author and finisher of our faith, that you begin things in us and you complete things in us. And I pray for those, uh, Father, that are listening today and watching today, Lord, that as you're speaking to their heart about the next steps in their life, God, and, and they may even feel like Abraham who was being asked to go to a land or be a part of something that you would show him and he didn't have all the details. God, I pray that you would continue to speak to them about what you have for them and about the practical steps that they can take to begin to obey. And Lord, I know that you honor obedience. And I pray, God, that as they obey you and as they honor the steps that you uh, shine the light on in front of them as they follow you, God, you would answer them with your favor and you would answer them with uh, open doors of opportunity beyond what they could ask, think, or imagine. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Tara. Thank you. We want to remind you at home that uh, you can always call us at here at TV44 if you have questions about where God is leading in your life. We want to pray with you. We care about you. But we also want to let you know that hey, Tara does travel around and she speaks mm -hmm. at churches and events. So you can go to the uh, email address on your screen or the phone number. You can contact her as well. Thank you so much, Tara, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jennifer. Still to come on Faith and Friends, the best chocolate cake ever. So Zach Bowers will have you believe. You don't want to miss that. But first, some programming news. OMEA District 3 Honors Concert. You can watch it again right here on TV44 coming up on February 10th at 8 p.m. DVD and CD copies are available for purchase by calling the station. February 14th on 9 p.m., a simply amazing story. Conceived out of rape and targeted for abortion, but alive and thriving today, hear Rebecca Kiesling's amazing tale. And you met her right here on Faith and Friends. Kim Brinkman-Smith, along with her mother Jackie Brinkman, are the featured speakers at the next AGLO meeting. That's February the 13th, 9.30 in the morning, taking place right here at the TV44 studios. 
Ryan Shazier made quite an impact on the football field for Ohio State, leading the team in tackles the past two seasons while earning all Big Ten honors as well as all American accolades. But as Mark tells us in today's OIO Faith on the Field segment, Shazier, who's leaving the Buckeyes with a year left of eligibility to pursue those NFL dreams, has visions of making a bigger impact off the field. Ryan Shazier's dad, Vernon, is the Miami Dolphins team chaplain. Someday, perhaps maybe later this fall, Shazier could join his dad in the NFL, and he says growing up a preacher's kid has made all the difference in his life. Uh, it really impacted my life a lot uh, because my dad, uh, uh, I, I know uh, most dads want to lead you the wrong way, but uh, my dad, I feel like, would never lead me the wrong way. And with him being a pastor, really helps out a lot because uh, he, 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 uh, he knows the Bible pretty well, so when I need something uh, I'm going through, I can always talk to him about it, and, and he always sent me to the Lord. Uh, when, I, when, he, when he can't help me, he always sent me to the Lord, and, and that's always, my, always been my backbone. And if I, I feel if I didn't have him as a, uh, as a father, I don't know what my life would be right now. Uh, so. The Florida native says he matured as a believer late in his teens. Uh, it, it was it, it was a really big moment. It was between like high school and college. Uh, I was I was still trying to find myself uh, because uh, when I was younger, sometimes you think you you have to be it or or and they're making you be it. But when, once you get older, you really understand how much how much uh, you really how, how really uh, important it is and how really close you have to get to them by yourself and not just through your parents. So I, 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 through, through that time, that's when it really helped me. Uh. Earlier this season, Shazier offered to go to Virginia with fellow linebacker Curtis Grant following Grant's father's passing away. His teammates certainly know about Shazier's servant heart. He's a great guy. Um, you know, he's one of those guys who's always trying to get the linebackers together, spend some time. So we've, we've got a really close bond because of that. Uh, you know, guy's got a big heart, and so anytime someone's down, he's looking to pick someone up. Um, and he's been a really good guy to get to know over the past couple of years. Uh, ever since I first came in, he was there to help me right along the way. So, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that I look up to definitely. Yeah, I always, I always try to help others because uh, our goal, our goal uh, on this world is to is to try to be like Christ and, and try to let others know about him and and and. and, and and try to help others grow and, and become Christians and, 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 and make it to heaven also. And, I, and that's been my goal. I've been trying to uh, help impact people, not through football, not just through football, but through faith. And I've just been trying to help it, anybody I can when it comes to that. Shazier has a constant reminder of his favorite verse. Uh, I have a Philippians 4.13 tattooed on me and it's, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and, and I, I really believe in that. Uh, when, I always talk to the Lord and whenever I have, when I need something or I, I always know he has my back and he'll always keep me strong through any adversity. Shazier isn't the only Buckeye who relies on his prayer life. When running back Carlos Hyde was suspended for the first three games this season, his faith and daily talks with the Lord strengthened and sustained him. My faith, my faith has uh, helped me a lot this year. You know, um, the time where I did get in trouble, you know, I just got, uh, I actually got closer to God during that time. You know, that was probably the person I talked to the most. You know, every night. You know, I just said a prayer to him, you know, that he'd get me through this. And, um, you know, and after he got me through it, you know, I still, before every game, you know, I say a prayer, you know, to him that he beats with me uh, today during this game and uh, just let me shine. And so far, it's been so good. February is Black History Month, an opportunity to reflect on some of the incredible African-American individuals who have paved the way for great things in our country. Our focus today, Sojourner Truth, often seen as a women's right advocate and abolitionist. Today, we want to take a look at the source of her devotion, and according to CBN.com, it was her commitment to Jesus Christ. The Lord gave me the name Sojourner, she said, because I was to travel up and down the land being a sign. Well, at 88, some of her last advice to others or to follow the Lord Jesus. Love those stories mm. to see how God was working throughout the years, you know, every year. That's right. And if you have any great African-American people from history who have influenced you, can you please send those to us? We'd like to share those with our viewers. You can send those to faithandfriends at WTLW. 
Com. Well, speaking of responses, we've been getting some great responses from those of you who partnered with us for Campaign 2014, and we are so thankful for your devotion as we spread the love of Jesus across the airwaves in this coming year. I have a few folks to thank here. I want to thank Ms. Karen Ohm and also Joe from Delphus. Thank you so much for partnering with us. Also, Randall and Janice Althaus from up in Bluffton for an annual pledge. You are making a huge difference, and we thank you. I want to say thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Tom Terrell from Ridgeway. Thank you so very much. All Ridgeway. Good the Stallers in Van Wert, we're thankful for that as well. And Judy Clement in Cloverdale, what a blessing you are to us as well. The TV station has been around for more than 30 years. The mm -hmm. mission has not changed. Our desire continues to be spreading the love of Jesus to all around. And now Mark Kuntz joins Kevin Bowers with an update on the great things that have been happening around here at TV 44. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. We are joined now by Station General Manager Kevin Bowers. And Kevin, you know, a lot of people come to TV44 for a lot of different reasons. And, and perhaps now would be a good time to remind folks of what our mission is and why we choose to air the programming that we do air. Yes, and, and you know, we have really a threefold mission. And that explains why we go different directions on programming. People often wonder why we air certain things. But essentially, we're here to evangelize the lost edify believers in Christ, and then provide news and entertainment that does not uh, compromise biblical principles. Yeah, so there's a couple of E's to keep in mind then. So that certainly must make it easy to find Christian-based programming to air then. Well, not necessarily. As you know, you know, it's difficult nowadays to find programming that meets that last criteria that is entertaining, and yet the content does not compromise biblical principles. We want to be family friendly, obviously, but this explains why we do high school sports, why we have Hazel on uh, or Andy Griffith at night. These are ways we can entertain the family and it's safe uh, for the children. A couple of years ago, 2012, we had a, a capital campaign that basically brought us into the digital age, redigitized the entire operation. What would you say to folks that would say, I don't need to support TV44. They had all this money for this new equipment. Surely they must be doing okay. Well, we surely were blessed through the capital campaign. And it was so neat to see the community come together and really invest in Channel 44. We are so grateful for the new equipment that we have. And we hope that that really blossoms in the sense that we produce more programming of higher quality that you'll be able to see over the coming years. And yet that's not really... Uh, our operating expenses. That's investment in the plant. So we still have these recurring bills, the uh, salaries, the uh, expenses just going out and producing the local programming. This is all really, uh, really relying upon donor support on a monthly basis. And as we, we just heard, we really were blessed this past uh, few months with our campaign 2014. We were. People stepped forward during the winter and we met our goal, surpassed 150,000. Dollars and yet here we are in February. We're entering February, and I look at the, the you know the weekly financials, and I think, all right, Lord, we're trusting you that people will continue to support, be faithful in that, and it's just hard to explain. It's a faith walk every day that people will step forward and be generous and support the mission. Before we go, what uh, what do you envision the future of TV44? I see us really investing more in local programming. If you look at the needs in our society, you know, family breakdown, there's a discouragement, a hopelessness pervasive in our society. And I think we in our, are in a unique position to produce programming that will encourage people, that will just show people the light of Christ and bring them what we call the hope of glory. And that's an eternal perspective. And I'm really excited about all those prospects. All right. Thank you very much, Kevin Bauer, Station General Manager here at WTLW. Well, thanks, Mark. This week's edition of our food segment is about chocolate cake. We searched far and wide to find the best chocolate cake recipes for you, our viewers. But what we found is that we ended up with a bit of a conundrum. Four chocolate cakes, all claiming to be the best chocolate cake ever. But we needed to be sure. We needed a taste test. We need you to help us decide which of these four cakes is the best chocolate cake ever. I think I can handle this job. Give it a go. That's a lot of cake. <laughs> All 
I'm going to eliminate the first and the third right away. What didn't you like about the first and the third? Um, I liked everything about them, but the other two are more moist. Do you think you could take on our own Andy Lynch in a cake eating contest? I think I could. Challenged. <laughs> After trying all four, have you come to a decision? Number two. I must say, I probably am your best choice for knowing what's the best chocolate cake because chocolate is my thing. Without icing, I would go with the last one. With icing, I would go with the first one. Do you consider that last one the best chocolate cake ever? No. <laughs> Is it better than your wife's chocolate cake? No comment. <laughs> I gotta be honest, the fourth one is my favorite, and I would put it up there with some of the best cakes I've ever had, if not the best. Can we have your prediction on uh, Andy Lynch, what he might choose as his favorite chocolate cake? Andy, I think he's gonna have to go with the third one, because I don't think he's gonna like this, this crust thing on the end here. We need to hide the cake from Andy. Andy, these are the four chocolate cakes that, nope, nope. Is there four chocolate cakes? Come on! Now we surveyed your uh, sports members in the office. Are each had their that? each had their individual opinion. Okay. We also asked for predictions of what would be your favorite. How well do you think the sports guys know your ta taste in chocolate cake? I would hope that they would know it very well. I'm very clear about what I like and don't like. You described to us what you like in chocolate cake. You need a moist chocolate cake. You need to have good chocolate flavor. That really moist versus dry, which is why I picked that one closest to me so far because that just looks. Like it's suffocating in milk. When? When can I eat these? Very soon. <laughs> All right, I'll go get milk. Got the milk. <laughs> ready. So that was our <laughs> kidding, taste test you? around the <laughs> office, and we are prepared and ready for Andy and Mark to try for the first time the four chocolate yes. cakes that we have today. I've restrained myself. And, and Matt is exactly right. The crust thing? Mm. No. No? No. Mark? You can't judge a cake by its crust. It's a big part of it. Wise words. Thank so you. let's get this started. We're going to begin with this first. Now at the end, each of these have their own special ingredients that make them special. And so we're going to talk about it at the end, but right now they will not know which of these cakes have different special ingredients. So we'll begin with the first one here. Andy, Mark, Jennifer, if you will. Thank you. <laughs> this is a big piece. Can I get your reactions on this first cake? I'm still processing. Hmm. It's okay. It's okay. Not great. Milk chocolatey. It's very moist. Mm -hmm. Has a very strong chocolate taste to it, which is surprising since it's a chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to know the special ingredient in this chocolate cake? Chocolate chips. That is one of them. Very good. Well, they're crunchy. <laughs> it tastes like a chocolate chip cookie almost. Jello pudding in this chocolate cake, along huh. with the chocolate mm. chips. It's got that very chocolatey. He mentions you can taste the chips in it because it's got that pudding in the chocolate chips. You're so going to drink that entire gallon in a five-minute segment, aren't you? That's impossible, metaphorically. <laughs> metaphorically, everything is possible. <laughs> Metasmically. So let's move on to the second cake now. Thank this, you, <laughs> this second Physically chocolate cake, you. if oh, you good. will. Thank you. <laughs> now, all of these recipes, of course, will be able to be found on our website, uh, the full recipes. And there's actually a couple different variances in the way that you can make these and add a few different things, um, which you can see on the website. Light and fluffy. Mm, very good. This one should be more moist. Really good texture. Mm. There's I a will, unique flavor in there. For though. a minute, I thought I was eating a chicken wing. See, I have cayenne pepper in there. I've never gotten that I response. I thought maybe that cake, that ever. there should be salad with that particular cake. Well, this particular cake secret ingredient is coffee oh. that we've added to this. So you can see why it'd be extremely moist. I will let you in on a secret. This was the <laughs> prime selection of That's two coffee. of our You're sales right. associates. It's all right. Both Justin and Vicky that you saw in the video there chose this as the best chocolate cake ever. I thought so that'd be my so favorite. the sales so folks wanted the coffee. coffee That's true, yes. 
No, coffees it's not. for closers. Here, you can have the big, big one. Well, I will eat well, Let's that. move to the third one before <laughs> we start mowing down large cakes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, this is certainly a more browner cake than yeah, the yeah, first two. Cool. <laughs> Too dry. Too dry. Yeah, it is quite dry. Jennifer. Chewy. I have yet to find my favorite. I almost picked up his milk. You're not able to deem any to of drink these it. the best chocolate cake not ever at all. so far? No. That is disappointing, but we do have one left. The <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the Tell secret, me to lie. <laughs> the secret this? ingredient, hold on. The oh, secret sorry. ingredient in this one is actually apple cider vinegar or vinegar in general that you can mm. add to this recipe. And it does come out a little bit more, we've heard bland or dry, um, but vinegar being the secret ingredient. So try the fourth one. Hopefully this will be the best chocolate cake Ever. Ever. <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> Sorry. You Thoughts are, on this one? You are a tough cookie or cake, cake. or something. It's very dry. <laughs> very dry. Yeah. I mean, you can almost smell the I don't aroma think it's of this that cake. Dry. Does that have applesauce in it? The secret ingredient in this cake cinnamon. And so you get cinnamon. a little bit more of that spice. Right. Um, Vicky, our sales. Uh, manager actually thought it tasted like spice cake rather than chocolate I thought so cake. Too. Yeah. <laughs> My wife, she makes wedding cakes, and as soon as it comes out of the oven, she'll let it cool a little bit, and then she'll put it in the freezer. And so when you get it back out to, to the thought, it is so moist and so flavorful, so my wife's is still number one. Sorry. So your wife's is the best chocolate cake ever. She could have ever. submitted one, and it would have been that the best. That is true. So. Anyone could submit uh, <laughs> recipes, rather, and we would try them out as the best chocolate cake ever. I will cake eat ever. more, though. So. I'll have at it. All right. Mark, do you feel that you're able to deem any of these the best you've ever tasted? Not the best I've ever tasted. They're all quite good, but uh, it's chocolate cake. So everyone here, no one here is calling it the best chocolate cake ever, but That's these true. are all called the best, the best chocolate cake ever. And we want you to try for yourself. Go online, get the recipe, make it. Maybe even let us know if you do try it and see if you decide it's the best chocolate cake ever. We need more test samples. I'm sure there's got to be some other variations that could perhaps be considered the best chocolate cake ever. So if you've got a, a family recipe, your own secret little twist to the chocolate cake, let us know and we'll test yeah. it out. We have more milk, so we need more cake. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And we have four weeks in February, and National Chocolate Month lasts all the way till the end of February. So we could keep sampling sampling for weeks to come, unless you're opposed to That's that. That's probably my favorite. Yeah, I'm very opposed to eating cake. <laughs> well, well, why is the shortest month of the year National Chocolate Month? I'm sure some people don't I like will, that. I think we should probably have someone from the YMCA come in, and they'll probably explain why it should be that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's what March is for. Eat cake in February and work, <laughs> work it all off March. in March. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us today, I believe. And that does wrap it up for our edition of Faith and Friends as well. But before we go, we're going to have one final look at our scripture. Can you talk? <laughs> <laughs> the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. And just a reminder to think about some of the things we've discussed in today's show, about courage, about uh, daring to be bold enough to follow the Lord's direction for you, as uh, Abram was able to do so many years ago. Well, that's going to do it for us this week on Faith and Friends. I want to thank all of our guests who uh, were with us today, and we've got a lot of good stuff coming up next week as well. And we will see you next week. Don't forget, you can go to WTLW.com anytime to review the uh, segments that you saw here. To watch Use him them. eat more we cake. And we, we do want to hear from you. Email us. <laughs> email us your chocolate cake recipe. That's what I really That's want right. to find Right. Faith and do friends at WTLW.com. I'm using my toothpick. Oh, my. We better go. This is just going to get messy. Good night, everybody. Goodbye.